Hello, and welcome to the GRACE podcast series. My name is Denise Brock, and I am the Operations Director for the Global Resource for Advancing Cancer Education, or GRACE. In this podcast series, we interview patients, advocates, and healthcare professionals to provide the most updated information for our community and to highlight important issues facing those dealing with a cancer diagnosis. We hope you find this information valuable. For questions or comments, please visit us at cancergrace.org. Hi, and welcome to the GRACE Supportive Care webinar series. My name is Rami Sedholm. Today we are joined by Dr. Stewart, medical oncologist at UCSD Morris Cancer Center, who specializes in the treatment of patients with genitourinary cancers. Today, we will be discussing the side effects of androgen deprivation therapy, a common treatment in prostate cancer. Dr. Stewart, thank you for joining us. Hey, thanks so much for having me. So Dr. Stewart, how do you typically describe androgen deprivation therapy to your patients? Yeah. So when patients come to me and they have a new diagnosis of uh, prostate cancer or need treatment for their prostate cancer, androgen deprivation therapy is one of the hallmarks for our treatments. We either use it by itself in patients who have kind of advanced disease or sometimes in combination with radiation therapy for localized uh, disease or salvage therapy after they've had prostate cancer or prostate cancer and their, they've had their prostatectomy and their cancer has come back locally. Sometimes we'll use ADT with radiation therapy. And what I tell people about it is that it is medication that essentially uses, um, essentially brings your testosterone down to nothing. Turns out that prostate cancer is a, a cancer that feeds off of testosterone. We essentially try to starve it. And by doing so, this can be a very great treatment for patients, um, patients who have advanced disease, metastatic disease, this treatment can prolong life for, for years at times. And um, so it's a, it's a hallmark to prostate cancer therapy. That's great. And one of the things that uh, we commonly hear from patients is that there are unique side effects to androgen deprivation therapy. What is the most common one you typically uh, hear patients complain about? Yeah, Rami, so, so absolutely. So we're, we're talking exactly about the side effects today, and that's what I want to emphasize. And you know, we'll go over it and I, I won't pull any punches. I'll tell you exactly kind of what to expect so that patients who, who are listening to this and are thinking about it uh, in the future or getting ready for ADT have a good idea. The one thing that I would step back and say once again is just how important and how useful this therapy is. This therapy, like a lot of therapies for cancers, has side effects and those, uh, those side effects can affect people and they can be, some can have major side effects, can, some just have annoying side effects. But the point is, is that this therapy can make people live significantly longer than if they did not have it. And really, there's just a huge amount of benefits. With that being said, there are unique side effects to it. And um, so I spend a lot of my days talking about these. The most important and the one that I hear about the most commonly is fatigue. So patients Guys will come to me um, when they're on ADT and they're a couple of months into it and they'll just tell me, it's like the wind is knocked out of my sails. And they'll say, yeah, I, I'm able to go about the, the day, but I just don't have the same amount of juice going through it. I, if people hear about this on the internet or read about fatigue, this is not the kind of fatigue that keeps you in bed all day long. You know, there are some patients that may have significant fatigue, but the vast majority of patients their fatigue is something where, you know, if they, um, if they are athletes, they may not be able to perform this at the same level. Um, otherwise, if they're, you know, regular old guy just going about his daily business, he might find that, um, you know, if he sometimes takes a nap in the middle of the day, he's more apt to take a nap in the middle of the day, might find in the, the end of the day, he's a little bit more tired. Sometimes they just find that they, they just don't have the same amount of energy to, to do a lot of things. With all that being said, people are still able to do all the things that they want to do in life. They might just not do as much. I get patients, especially where, where I'm at, who love going swimming. You can go swimming, you can go biking, you can do all sorts of things. But you might not be able to swim for as long as you normally did, 
or you might not be able to bike for as far or as fast as you were, but you're still able to do the things that you want to do. But no doubt it, um, it is something that I hear about, and it's a real thing. Thanks for sharing that, Dr. Stewart. Um, in addition to fatigue, are there any common physical changes that patients uh, notice? Yeah. So, you know, testosterone is one of the, the major hormones in men's health that keeps muscles strong, keeps weight off. So it really helps with your metabolism. That's what I tell patients. So in patients who are, who are on ADT, if you're on ADT, there's a good chance that you could gain weight And it's all the weight you don't want. It's all central weights. Now, when I talk to patients about ADT and when they're starting it, I tell them, you don't have to gain weight. The way that you can stop yourself from gaining weight is just cutting the calories. Generally speaking, if I have everyone do the exact same thing they were doing before ADT, you're eating the same amount, working out the same amount, then you're going to gain weight. But if you decrease your calories somewhat, you can maintain your normal weight. The other really important thing is that it can decrease your muscle mass. And it decreases the muscle mass in some of the major muscles in your shoulders, your upper arms, and your thighs, and your hamstrings, kind of some of your core muscles. People ask me what they can do to prevent that, and I tell them exercise. And they say, well, listen, doc, I, I already go to the gym or I walk or whatnot. That's all great and great for your cardiovascular health. But what I tell patients that they need to do in order to keep their their strength up is they have to do weights. So they have to do weight training. So I usually tell them, if you're a member at a gym, get a personal trainer for a couple of days who can help you specialize with learning a couple of uh, exercises to really do strength training in your upper arms, your chest, and your legs. Um, And then you know, do that a couple of times a week, trying to maintain the, that strength. If you don't do that, you will lose strength. And, and certainly that will be, um, it's not great to feel like you don't have strength. Plus, if you don't have the same amount of muscle mass, you're more apt to put on a little bit more weight too. So exercise, exercise, and watch the diet. Absolutely. And to just summarize some of what you've said so far, it seems that fatigue is a very common symptom. Yeah. And in addition to that, uh, patients may experience weight gain and muscle loss. How does this potentially tie in to cardiovascular health? Yeah, so, so ADT has been associated with um, an increased risk of diabetes and an increased risk of heart disease as well, likely linked to the two things that, that we just talked about. So I talk to people about, you know, if you want to avoid the risk of diabetes and avoid the risk of heart disease, got to eat well, got to exercise. There's also something called the metabolic syndrome that um, that ADT can be associated with. Again, all kind of linked to diet and exercise. Keep the weight off. Likely, you can help mitigate a lot of these uh, these side effects. Great. Now, one of the uh, more taboo things to typically discuss in a doctor's office is sexual health. How does that tie into ADT? Yeah. So in my clinic, it's not taboo at all. We talk about it every day because it's important. And um, and ADT certainly can affect sexual health. It affects sexual health in two major ways. The first important thing is that it can cause erectile dysfunction. A lot of patients who come and see me, they've had prostatectomies or radiation, so their erectile dysfunction may already be, um, they, they may already have some erectile dysfunction. The ADT will certainly worsen it. And if patients have not had any of that treatment before, and, um, they have normal erections, then it can sometimes, you know, cause erectile dysfunction. I refer a lot of my my patients to our men's health clinic here. Those guys are they're awesome. I think drugs like Viagra can sometimes be effective, but there are lots of other medications that we sometimes think about that um, we have a discussion about. Um, you know, either in my clinic or one of the urologists over at the men's health clinic to kind of. Um, help with maintaining erections. The other thing that ADT does, ADT does is it decreases your libido. So one of the other things is that not only does it give you erectile dysfunction, it decreases your sex drive. That can have significant in, uh, impacts on my patients' lives, on their partners' lives, their partners' relationships. 
the truth is, is that I have an open and honest conversation about the, the risk and benefits of ADT. And I talk to my patients about this. I think when they know that this is likely going to happen, you know, it's, it's easier than if they, um, if people don't hear about it and doctors don't talk to them about it. Absolutely. And it's great that you have those conversations in clinic with your patients. One thing that I appreciated was uh, you sharing a close relationship you have with urology. Are there any other non-pharmacologic uh, interventions the urologist uh, may offer for some of your patients? Yeah, so so absolutely. So for lots of these things. So they're, they're actually, you know, regarding the, the sexual health, there are Devices to help maintain erections, specifically those are those are um, sometimes used. There are actually other drugs that you can use, not Viagra, but that are kind of inserted at the, the tip of the penis, or actually little um, injections into the penis that can help with maintaining erections. In addition to those things, you know, lots of guys when they have prostate cancer have a lot of other symptoms as well they've had radiation or surgery, they can sometimes have a little incontinence as well. Having a good relationship with your urologist is super important. Um, They can usually help with a lot of these things. Usually these things don't go away, but we can significantly improve patients' quality of life while they're on ADT. Great. And um, moving on, are uh, hot flashes a common symptom that you hear about? Yeah, hot flashes are very common. So I tell all patients they're going to have a hot flash. The statistics are something like 85%. So I just let patients know. Hot flashes are these symptoms where all of a sudden your body can have this warm feeling. These usually last 20 seconds to a couple of minutes. Usually they're a minute or two minutes. I've had some patients where they last longer. That's not the majority of them. And these can happen in... In different, um, in different amounts. So most patients will have a couple of hot flashes either a day or a week. And they'll be bothersome, but they, patients usually can um, go about their daily lives and it's no big deal. Some patients have very few. Every once in a while, I'll have patients that have hot flashes that are significantly affecting them. They happen while you know, the patient is trying to sleep, keeps them up at night, and they can't sleep well or it affects their work. Patients are able to work on ADT, no problem, but these hot flashes can be bothersome. If hot flashes are an issue, we have lots of medications, a lot of interventions that we can do to try to help this. The biggest issue that that patients have is when they have hot flashes, they don't tell their doctors about it because there are lots of good medications that we can try to help with the side effects. Again, not all of these drugs that we have will cure the hot flashes. They won't get rid of them. altogether, but they can significantly make them better. Some of these medications are a drug like venlafaxine, which is a, a drug that's used for depression, anxiety, but can also significantly help with um, hot flashes. There are some other ones as well that we use, a drug called gabapentin that can be helpful and some other ones as well. The most important thing is if you start having hot flashes, you've got to tell your doc because there's usually something that we can do to, to help it out. Thanks for uh, bringing that up, Dr. Stewart. Uh, In an analogous fashion, uh, a lot of women who are treated with hormones for breast cancer, uh, in addition, complain about mood changes. Are those things that you typically notice for men with prostate cancer? Yeah, yeah. Romy, I actually usually hear this from the partner, usually not from the patient. And uh, some people will tell me that, uh, you know, people can get a little, um, you know, snarky, it's usually mild. There are a few patients that I've had who have had a history of depression where they can actually get some significant depression while they're on ADT. That's not the majority of patients, but something that we watch out for and screen for in my clinic. Um, most patients, the, the mood disorders that happen, um, depression or um, you know, some irritability, is kind of mild and not, not too significant. When it is significant, One of the things that we do is, again, we talk about some of these medications like antidepressant medications that can help mitigate these these side effects. They can be extraordinarily effective. Um, But yeah, but, you know, mood changes can happen. And uh, 
last uh, common uh, scenario that you mentioned uh, previously um, is the importance of bone health. Um, yeah. So how do you discuss that with your patients? Yeah. So it turns out that patients with um, patients who are getting ADT, it thins your bones. So um, when patients are on um, androgen deprivation therapy, they are at increased risk for osteoporosis. Usually, what I do is I actually check their bone health at the beginning of treatment. This is by something called a, a bone density scan. This is not a nuclear. Um, uh, bone scan that people get to look for prostate cancer that's spread to the bone, but a bone density scan that looks for how thick your bones are. So based on what this shows, sometimes we put people on bone strengthening agents. Generally, all of my patients, I tell them to take vitamin D and calcium. I usually tell them to take vitamin D at 1,000 international units a day and 1,000 milligrams of calcium a day. Patients who have heart disease, there's some mixed literature about calcium and heart disease. So, you know, I talk to patients about risks and benefits. If patients get a bone density scan and they already are at risk for having a bone fracture or have thin bones, then sometimes I put them on a medication called a bisphosphonate to help strengthen their bones. Usually I check their bone density at the beginning of treatment and every couple of years while they're on therapy. If they begin to have osteoporosis or are moving towards that, we'll sometimes start a bisphosphonate at that time. Great. And a uh, common question we typically hear in a uh, clinic as well uh, for smokers or uh, those who socially drink alcohol, do we know of any of the benefits of uh, withstanding for at least smoking as it relates to bone health? The, 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 so um, generally speaking, what I tell my patients is don't smoke. Like there's the, the literature on smoking is just so bad that I, I tell my patients, if you can do one thing, stop smoking. In terms of alcohol, what I tell patients is, you know, limiting their, their alcohol to, you know, some kind of social, um, social drinking is, seems acceptable. Um, there are some medications that we use in prostate cancer that can affect the liver. And so we are um, sometimes hesitant about alcohol in those situations, but most of the times, a drink a night, a couple of drinks throughout the week, no problem. Great. Um, well, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Stewart, uh, yeah. for talking with us today. Uh, we hope to have you again for the uh, Cancer Grace uh, webinar series. Yeah, uh, I'd be, <laughs> I, it, it's been great, Rami. I've enjoyed talking with you about it. Please let me know if I can uh, help you guys out in any way. Thank you again for joining us. This podcast was made possible by the generosity of sponsorship from our friends at Lily, Novartis, and Takeda. Please like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Send us feedback, share your story, donate, and visit us for more information at cancergrace.org. Thank you for listening.